Okay, this tutorial is uh, for section 7.3, the trigonometric functions part of chapter 7. And we're going to be looking specifically at the formulas. And if you turn to page 229, there's your six formulas for the trigonometric ratios. And they split them into two parts, the primary ratios and reciprocal ratios. I've just written them here uh, quickly. Uh, we have to remember that sine is y over r, cosine is x over r, tangents y over x, cosecant, and these are the reciprocal ratios of these other ones beside them, r over y, secant r over x, and of course cotangent x over y. And this all comes from what's noted to say a positional vector, or a, a radius vector, I guess is what your book calls it. So if you have a certain radius at some point x, y, you can use these ratios, these trig ratios. And we have to remember that because if you, if you draw this out and you put the x line there and the y line there, it's just like a right triangle. So we know that r squared is going to equal x squared plus y squared, which is, comes from Pythagorean's theorem. So I'm not going to derive the ratios for you. I'm just going to give, the, give them to you. And as the purpose of our uh, tutorials is to do some extra questions, that's what we're going to do. So here I have the first one, and that's... If theta is a position angle at P is equal to negative 5 and 12, find the six trig ratios, okay, and the exact values of those. So what we should primarily do in this case is always draw our little positional vector here. Now, I'm going to remind you that you have to be careful with negatives and positives quite a bit here. And you have to remember where x's and y's are negative. So here we have a point at negative 5 and 12. Negative 5 would go back, back here, and then 12 would go up here. So this would be a point right there. Well, it'd probably be more like over here somewhere, actually, but it doesn't really matter. It's not going to be a scale drawing, obviously. So here's my vector, and I know that this is negative 5 here, and that this is 12 here. Negative 5 and 12. So if I draw the triangle in, this is my point here. This would go back 5, negative 5, and then up 12 before I hit the point, right? So I can draw in the right triangle so that we can see that relationship there. So obviously, in order to get all the ratios, we need to calculate the r value first. So we know that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So we need that by plugging our numbers in. x squared would be negative 5 squared plus 12 squared equals r squared. So this would be 25 plus 144 equals r squared. And this would be 169 squared equals r squared, so r is going to equal 13. r is always positive because of the squaring and the Pythagorean theorem. So now that we have our three lines, or our r value, x value, y value, we can find the six trigonometric functions just by plugging it in. So we're going to use the short forms of each sine, theta. Well, we know that's y over r, so y over r, and remember, don't forget the signs that 12 is positive and 13 is positive, but x here is still negative. So y over r is 12 over 13. Okay, cosine theta, that's x over r. That would be negative 5 over 13. And then y over x for tangent. y over x in this case is 12 over negative 5. So negative 5 would be there. A negative value. And again here for the other ones, cosecant, which is the short form of cosecant is CSC, theta. I forgot to put the angle in there. Right, this is our reference angle here, whatever it might be. <clears throat> uh, remember when you're doing reference angles, I'm just going to go on a, a little bit of a tangent here myself. When you're doing reference angles, you're always drawing your angle with re reference to the x-axis, either this one or this one, okay? Okay, cosecant, we'll look at that a little closer. That is r over y, 
So r over y, 13 over 12. And then we have secant. And that simply is r over x. x again being negative. And finally, cotangent. And cotangent is x over y. And again, x being negative. So there's our answers for our first one. So I'm going to do another one here that deals with a similar type problem uh, in this case as well. So we'll flip over. Okay, similar type of problem, but you start with a trigonometric ratio rather than a given point. So you have to find the point first before you can work on it. So we'll make sure that's in the field of view. So if we have sine is equal to negative 5 over 3 in the third quadrant, find the other five ratios. So what we want to do here for ourselves is draw this first. Third quadrant, so somewhere in here, reference angle goes here with the, so this would be our theta, reference angle always goes with the x-axis. Obviously we could We'd start here for the full angle, but we, we can have a reference angle there. So we have r being here, x being here, and y being here. So I'm going to draw these in. So let's say our point was there somewhere. So we know this is x, then this is y. Okay? And obviously, I should probably... I have to change this to a positive 3 over 5 because sine can't be negative. Or sorry, no, I'm right. Sine is negative there. It's negative 3 over 5. Because sine, if you look back at our formula, sine, again, if you're looking on page uh, 229 or if you have it memorized by now, is y over r. r is always positive. So this would be like y over r. So y is, makes sense that it's negative. So this becomes a negative 3. And r is always positive, so this becomes a 5. So we now know that this r is equal to 5 and this y is equal to negative 3. Okay, it's a third quadrant angle. It makes sense that it's, it's a negative there. And now we have to calculate x. So we know that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So we work from there first. So x squared, we leave blank, is equal to r squared minus y squared. So x squared is equal to 5 squared minus negative 3 squared. So 25 minus 9 is going to give us x squared. So x squared equals 16. So x can equal the root of 16 is 4 or negative 4. It can be either one, and by looking at our diagram, we know that it has to be negative 4 because it's going backwards. So this becomes negative 4. So then to plug in our values for our other six functions, it's quite simple. We just look at our formulas. So let's do that. So we have sine is given already. So we can start out with cosine is x over y. x over y, negative 4. Or sorry, x over r, pardon me. Okay, that's cosine theta. And then we have tangent theta. So that is y over x, negative 3 over negative 4, or 3 fourths. And we have cosecant. Cosecant, I was going to put cosine there, pardon me again. So cosecant is r over y, so r over y. And secant, and that's r over x. And finally, cotangent, and that's going to be x over y, so negative 4 over negative 3, or 4 over 3. There it gives you a couple of different examples that you can do using the primary six trigonometric ratios.